SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, in today's video, we finally get something that was promised to us. Well, one of the things that was promised to us a long time ago with 5G networking, enhancements, and actual real world usage. All right. So, so far, 5G really has been a story of fixed wireless access. 5G home internet, which in and of itself has been an absolute, you know, incredible new option for people uh, to ditch expensive cable or fiber, give them an actual option, a primary connection option outside of cellular or DSL. So th in my opinion, it's been great having fixed wireless for the industry, pricing and all those things. Uh, and now, you know, we're seeing things like network slicing getting exercised and demonstrated. And we've got an update here at Verizon. Enhanced video calling, all right, and enhanced connections. All right, let's check out some of the details here. I'll get you guys linked. Uh, the Verizon News Center webpage for you guys. Uh, that link is in the description. Ways to support us can be found there as well. Please do like and share our videos. Subscribe if you're new here and turn on the bell notifications icon. Never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, so we've got enhanced video calling for Verizon. Uh, what Verizon is going to offer is a an experience of optimized video, optimized sound quality, on calling apps and that includes calling apps that are video based right so not just the sound clarity but also the video resolution i'm guessing it's going to have you know just based on the fact that uh you know it's going to be on a network slice a dedicated type of experience or service expectation through the actual network slice so having a priority having um you know quality of service expectation means that the experience for these applications is going to be improved compared to not having that same experience on like a non-network slice version of running whatever application it is. So it could be FaceTime, it could be Zoom, it might be, uh, you know, the, the, the Google Meet, you know, that has the video option. And then of course, with the audio piece, it also probably allows them to run an optimized version uh, bit rate for audio enhancements, right? So that the call sounds very clear, uh, doesn't get choppy, uh, you know, and, and probably the most important thing there, it's going to be a dedication for uplink. And I think also optimizations through the actual apps. So I think you're going to see more and more developers probably going to start looking at some of the features and capabilities that the apps can do if they're seeing network connections having you know, network slicing, allowing them to do it, right? So now with the 5G, uh, actual 5G standalone launching for Verizon, they're doing it over N77 C-band, the 3700 frequency, we're going to have to start seeing some other things happening too for Verizon, you know, and I'll, and I'll talk about that here in a second. So the phones are going to be important. You're going to need an iPhone 14 or newer. You're going to need a Samsung Galaxy S23 or newer. You're going to need a Pixel 9 lineup, right, type device. And whatever happens moving forward, those devices will have these capabilities. You'll have to go into the cellular settings and then turn on and activate whatever, you know, the OS uh, should be. It's like SA 5G enabled. I remember seeing that on my iPhone 14. Uh, for, I, I, I think, Android, uh, you'll have to do the same. Make sure the SA standalone 5G is enabled. And then there's like, enhanced 5g features that you could turn on and i think for verizon there's actually a switch another toggle uh for this feature so there's there's going to be a couple of things you're going to have to do in steps to make sure that it has been enabled all right so this comes down to some technical stuff even besides just talking about phones and features on plans and whatever verizon is going to have to move more bandwidth from lt to nr like to 5g they they They've got band 13, band 66, band 2, uh, you know, band 48. They've got all these bands that are still on LTE. As of right now, we're seeing in some places Verizon has turned on 5G for band 5 and 5. They're going to probably have to move all that bandwidth to N5 and not share it. And, and they don't share it in the sense they've got dedicated 10 megahertz on N5, dedicated 10 megahertz on band 5 LTE. That's going to all have to start to change. Like, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they advertise. There needs to be more channels 
of 5G on her, not just N77, right? 140 or 160 megahertz. That's cool, but you're going to need additional bandwidth, especially different carriers like the N5. You're going to have to move to N66. You're going to have to move to N48. You just have to, right? So that there's additional bandwidth on these connections. So it can enhance the network slices, ensuring that you have higher frequencies that can achieve better latency so you can meet the promises that you have with these features. And let's not pretend like Verizon doesn't have thousands of cell sites that still need to be upgraded to 5G, right? And sites that are only band 13, sites that are band 13 and band 66, you know, some sites don't even have, you know, band five, they don't have 850 built on them or, or band two even, it's crazy, but that's all real. And, you know, th this is probably live in, you know, the, the top 100 or 150 markets or something, whatever the root markets are. And it'll be cool for the people there, but there's going to be versions of this where you go outside of a certain network area and it's not active. There's versions of this where a tower site isn't updated. It's not enabled. You won't know, right? Because you're not going to be able to tell the difference or something. It's not going to, you know, give you a, uh, an indicator and say, all right, uh, network slicing is active. I don't think that's going to happen, you know, but it, it may be something meaningful. It may be something important, but I think probably the, the, the piece that's going to be holding this whole thing back is the fact that Verizon needs to just nationwide enable this feature when they have nationwide upgrades done a little bit premature i think maybe it's cool it's kind of serving like a beta testing in a way uh, but if you're like me and you're always in your home market and when you travel you go to other big markets you're not really gonna have any trouble in that respect but you know you're not going to the you know and, and i'll speak to the homeboy uh dusty's neck of the woods you know, and you're not going to have a lot of this enabled. And there's a lot of older legacy sites that need to be upgraded and other things. So there's a version of this, is, which is really cool and promising. Uh, but there's a version of this or some angles to consider where I don't think Verizon actually, uh, you know, can charge for this. And I think that's why, you know, you're kind of seeing it just being included in a plan, right? And that's another thing. You know, this is going to be something that you're going to see on like the top tier plans. You know, it's not going to be on the entry level plans. This is something Verizon is trying to monetize, you know, uh, and, and by monetize, just getting you to upgrade to a premium plan, paying more on a per, uh, per line basis. All right. So important details there, but encouraging and, you know, fun, definitely exciting. What's your take on all this? Are you willing to upgrade to a premium plan for these features? Were you looking for these features? Do you want more features like this this is the promise of 5g right it's it's software enhanced software defined scalability unique features and experiences that are supposed to be better than anything 4g and lt could offer us right what's your take on all this sound off in the comment section below tell the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard